with the announcement that a new Stargate series may be in the works. I think the biggest fan response has been cautious optimism. People are excited for the opportunity for new Stargate content, but they're also a little bit concerned that we might get another Stargate Origins. But I don't think we will, and I'm going to explain why. <laughs> but first, we need to discuss exactly what made Stargate Origins so bad. Oh, Stargate Origins. <laughs> Where to begin? Stargate Origins was a web series that debuted in 2018. It featured 10 10 minute long episodes that would later be compiled into a singular feature length film entitled Stargate Origins Catherine, which is currently available on Amazon Prime. It was actually intended to be the first attempt at original content for the Stargate paid streaming service named Stargate Command, which launched in 2017 and subsequently shut down and moved all of its content over to YouTube for free. The streaming service was just rife with problems and technical issues right from the get-go, and it was kind of a weird idea. At that point, Stargate Universe had ended six years prior, and there hadn't really been any new Stargate content, and when you think about it, no other singular franchise has a streaming service. When most people are looking at the streaming services that they want to subscribe to, they are looking for a service that presents them with as much varying content as possible. And someone who wasn't originally a fan of Stargate is very unlikely to seek out this platform. Unless you have a ton of marketing dollars, they didn't, your best bet to get new fans for a concluded series or franchise is to put that content on a highly trafficked site like Hulu or Netflix and let potential new fans kind of stumble across it organically. The story of Stargate Origins follows a young Catherine Langford who is in Egypt with her father, Paul Langford, studying the big device that they found in the sand 10 years prior. And then all of a sudden, bam, Nazis. For Hitler and for Germany. Hitler. Hitler. Yep, the Nazis just roll up and are like, yes, we know exactly what this is, we know exactly how to use it, and we have a gate address. So using like a car battery, they power up the gate and establish a successful wormhole on their first try. The Nazis kidnap Paul Langford, go through the gate, rapidly encounter a gold and cause a whole mess of trouble. So Catherine decides to mount a rescue with two soldiers, one of whom is her boyfriend, and they figure out how to go through the gate. It's really easy. They meet a young Kassouf. Catherine, Beal. Kassouf. Kassouf. Kassouf? Kassouf. Kassouf. They figure out very quickly that he is speaking a dialect of ancient Egyptian. It's remarkably similar to ancient Egyptian. Once Wasif told me the Coptic bow placement to listen for. Harsesis child! <laughs> Catherine is the one who breaks the last sigil off the carving of the gate address home. I really hate to do this. <laughs> the Nazis show the go old videos of Hitler. <laughs> Lots of Hitler. <laughs> A surprising amount of Hitler. 
The boyfriend dies, the other soldier gets brainwashed into becoming a Jaffa, uh, Catherine and Paul Langford do ultimately escape, but they have their memories wiped by a Goa old who seems to leave like the latent suggestion in Catherine's mind that she is to assemble a team with the power to destroy Ra, and when they have that, then they are to eventually return, and she has to have that team bear the sigil of of Ra for some reason. Origins feels like a play for some reason. Like, it feels like I'm watching a stage play. And I don't know enough about theater to determine exactly why it feels like a live theater performance, but it does. Father, there you are. You said that a Captain James Beale would be stopping by to say hello and see our little sphinx here. Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you, sir. The pleasure is mine. Have you any money on you? And also, Catherine does not speak like a woman in the 1940s. She speaks like a modern woman. Ew, no. And this movie also just has, like, a lot of slapping. Just a whole lot of slapping. <laughs> Everyone is just slapping. Everyone else, like, throughout. You just got slapped. The thing is that the core idea of Stargate Origins isn't bad. Like, we know from SG-1, specifically the episode The Torment of Tantalus, that the gate had been activated once before in 1945. <laughs> and Ernest Littlefield, who was Catherine's fiancé at the time, actually went through the gate, and then the gate shut down and trapped him on the other side, and then Catherine's father lied to her and told her that Ernest died in a lab explosion. And we also know that the United States brought the gate over to America sometime around World War II because they wanted to keep it out of the hands of the Nazis. Franklin D. Roosevelt was really interested in the gate. He thought that it could potentially be some sort of weapon. And we know that the Russians acquired a DHD from the Nazis after the end of World War II. So it would make sense if the Nazis were studying the DHD. And we also know historically that Hitler had a huge interest in the occult, so this is something that he would devote resources to studying. So it would make sense if the Nazis would have made a play for the Stargate and there would have been some sort of like American soldier Nazi battle type of thing that occurred before bringing the gate to America. So in that way, this makes some sense. But the way they executed it is so messy. For me, the question remains as to why. Why was this the story they decided to lead with on their new streaming service? Who was this for? I just have to imagine they didn't consider the audience at all. Because really only very dedicated Stargate fans were probably going to be paying for that streaming service. So why make content that only has a very tenuous connection to the rest of the franchise and is made by completely different people and features a story that's shoddy enough that longtime Stargate fans are going to see the cracks immediately? Stargate Origins had a director who had primarily only done short-form entertainment before. Mercedes Bryce Morgan had worked on other web series, music videos, and commercials. And the two writers that they hired hadn't worked on anything Stargate before, 
So aside from MGM's involvement, there basically was no behind the scenes connection to the rest of the Stargate franchise. But the new series that's in the works is being pitched by Brad Wright, one of the original Stargate showrunners. And this series would be a continuation of the previous iterations of Stargate. Now, there's no guarantee that he would be getting the old band back together, but I'd like to imagine that with Brad Wright at the helm, he would at least be reaching out to and trying to loop in all of the wonderful creative people who helped make the original Stargate series into the franchise that we know and love. And I also imagine that Brad Wright would be much more inclined to pay attention to things like tone and continuity. Another significant difference from Origins is that this new Stargate series would be intended for either a network or a main streaming service. So something like Fox or Hulu or Netflix. And networks or streaming sites like that tend to have a much different standard, a higher standard than there would be for a niche web series. According to Joseph Malazzi, another former Stargate showrunner, Brad Wright is going into this with a story and a setting in mind. So he has a plan. And I at least feel confident that he has asked himself the questions, why this story and who is this for? The new Stargate series has not 100% gotten the green light yet, but if, or I should say when, it does, I don't think we need to worry about having another Origins on our hands. However, I do think that everyone will be going into this with different hopes and expectations, so some people will definitely be disappointed but others will absolutely love it. And it may even bring more new fans into the Stargate family. At the very least, I feel confident that all of the core elements are there for them to make a quality series that fits nicely within the rest of the Stargate franchise. I feel like every 10 seconds in Origins, I would be like, I'm so done, I'm so done. But the moment that really just made me like check out was when they have Kasuf saying, Bunny Way, the same way as in the Stargate movie. Mm. Bunny Way, Bunny Way, did you Bunny Way? I was just like, how dare you? And then I think that's the same scene where Catherine is like getting high and working through their current conundrum and it's just so weird. This scene is finally- Excuse me, please stop. Stop, please stop. The Torment of Tantalus is such a good episode. Like, not only do we get that, like, alliance of the four races, which I always found really interesting, but, like, the emotional core of the story of Ernest living alone for 50 years and, like, imagining a made-up Catherine who he interacted with and that they led this whole life together, and then real Catherine shows up and she's like, no, that was real for me. And it's just like, oh... Poor Ernest. I wish they would have checked in on Ernest later. Like, how, how was he doing? How did he readjust to being back on Earth after, like, 50 years? Because between the 1940s and the 1990s, like, there were some major technological jumps. And now, I know Ernest was there in that building and there was the glowy thing that he called a book, but still... Like, going from the 1940s to, like, computers and cell phones had to have been a lot for him. I think with the reduced amount of social interaction from the pandemic, like, we can all probably relate to Ernest lately. Like, we might spend a lot of time not really wearing pants, 
and also not really remember how to interact with other humans when we come across them. And all we have to like rely on are, are glowing devices that tell us all of the secrets of the universe. So it's very, very relevant for today.